I, this is Simon Dad here. If you enjoy this channel, please subscribe. It does help me out a lot. I'm doing a video on a um, examples of phrases that narcissists use um, both to manipulate and as kind of a, a form of a free pass to have a double standard. Um, the first phrase that comes to mind that I, um, you know, heard a lot during my relationship with the covert narcissist was, um, your emotions are not my responsibility. Um, I know this is something that gets vomited around, um, you know, all over social media in 2023 with kind of this garbage idea that not caring about anyone else on the planet is healthy. Um, I completely disagree. And um, I think especially in a relationship that your partner's happiness and well-being are, if you love them, kind of a priority um, for you. And I would assume that um, if you feel that way that you'd expect or and want the um, you know your partner to feel the same and so um, you know the example that I'm going to give is, is going kind of personal here so I think I've done a video um, previously on narcissistic collapse and um, if you've never seen it it's pretty bad it's kind of a, a weird, you know, specific thing for narcissists where it's kind of a combination existen existential crisis, depressive low, you know, maybe even suicidal ideation. I mean, they, they, they just hit rock bottom. And what, you know, kind of the way I think about it is that what separates a narcissistic collapse from basically anything else that the narcissist experiences is that um, at that point the narcissist is feeling so low and the you know maybe supply has run out or it's just not enough to help them and the um, circumstances of their life are so bleak and chaotic that basically it goes through their false self and you know it goes through their defenses all the way to the core of their being and just hurts them and by definition I mean the false self is a defense mechanism and so they at that point they they just have no defenses to this horrible experience that they're having and they just collapse both you know emotionally mentally physically um, they're emotionally flat they are um, mentally in a fog they can't make any decisions or think straight you know physically they're you know weak and you know maybe you know feeling sick I mean just absolutely hit rock bottom so there was an incident where um, during my uh, four-year relationship with the covert narcissist she went through this once and um, you know she reached out to me and I immediately drove over assessed the situation and took care of things and got her back to where she needed to be and, and to be healthy and just back to her normal self and there's a lot involved there but I'm not gonna like go into details so um, that happened and I, you know, re you know, responded in that way of, you know, supporting my girlfriend, which to me was just very natural. I mean, that's what you do when you're in a relationship and what you do when you truly love somebody. Um, some months, um, later, um, I had a really bad depressive low. So, I mean, I'm dysthymic shock. That's why I'm called you know, dysthymic dad. And I'm also bipolar too, um, which means that I have really bad lows that just kind of happen. And, um, you know, the one that I was experiencing at the time was, was pretty bad. It was, you know, a combination of like, um, you know, not having enough 
you know, brain chemicals to, to get me where I needed to be and also stuff, you know, hap- happening external to my life that was kind of stressful. And so without thinking anything, I reached out to my girlfriend and said, hey, you know, I'm in this really bad depressive low and I'd love to get some support for you. You know, maybe some, you know, just some, you know, uh, affection, some, you know, chance to like, you know, hang out and, you know, just feel comfort and safe. And um, her response was no. And she used that phrase, your emotions are not my responsibility. Um, Needless to say, my jaw hit the floor and I said, but, you know, what about when I helped you out when you, you know, I didn't know that it was narcissistic collapse at the time, but I mean, you know, when I helped you through, through that, um, you know, situation and she said, oh, well, that's completely different and blah, blah, blah. And then she actually had the gall, the gall to lecture me and, and told me that I needed to work on, you know, creating a support for me when I was in a depressive low so that when things like this happened, I could reach out to them. And again, like I was just in shock and I I just, you know, and I said, you're my girlfriend. You are part of my support. And I was hoping that I could count on you to be there for me when I'm in a low and I need help. And she said, you know, you know, no, you know, I'm not, you know, your emotions are not my responsibility. You need to have like your own, you know, support. And I, you know, we (laughs) went into it for like, you know, half an hour of arguing. And I said, look, I, I have friends, I have family this, you know, that are, are, you know, people that can help support me, but you're my girlfriend, you know, we're in a relationship. And so you're kind of like my number one, you know, you're, you're the person that I look to, you know, first to help me when I'm in a bad place like that. And she just said, I, I can't be. And, you know, reiterated, your emotions are not my responsibility. And so we, we argued for like half an hour. I just, you know, I stopped being depressed and I just started getting really angry. But, um, you know, that again, that was a really good example. And there were other times in the relationship where I, where I heard that phrase of, your emotions are not my responsibility. And again, it, it, for her, it was a free pass to basically have a double standard. And so, you know, and along, you know, those same lines of phrase that, um, you know, I heard a lot during the relationship was we're different people and that's okay. And so, um, you know, a hypothetical, hypothetical example would be, I would drive over to her place, pick her up, drive to the club, you know, we dance, have fun. And then I drive her back to her place and then drive home. And I would do this all the time. And one, you know, one time I said, Hey, you know, I, I don't want to drive tonight. Um, how about you drive over and pick me up and then drive us to the club? And she said, no, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do that. It's, you know, you live far away. It's a really long drive. And I said, I don't think that's fair. You know, I don't think it's fair that I always drive to your place to pick you up and drive us to the club. But when I ask you if you could do it once, you say that you don't want to and that you think that, it, you know, my place is far away and stuff. And she just came right back and said, well, you and I are different people. I don't want to drive that far and you know, we're different people and that's okay. And again, at that point she was doing that whole manipulation therapy trick of, you know, broken record where I would, you know, make a point. She would just reply back with, we're different people and that's okay. 
and then I'd bring up another point and you know an example where this isn't fair and she would just say we're different people and that's okay and so again it was just this um, you know different phrases that the narcissist use both to manipulate um, but also to kind of give themselves a free pass so that they can continue to have a double standard um, in the relationship. So um, anyways, I just um, thought I'd do a video on this because honestly, I came across that phrase t earlier today and it was kind of triggering. It, it made me really mad when I was reading something and the phrase, your emotions are not my responsibility <laughs> came up because I was just like, uh, I remember hearing that all the time. And um, yeah, it's just incredibly frustrating, especially when you're in a relationship with someone who says that they love you. But again, if, if they are not showing it through their actions, you know, in retrospect, that was a huge, huge, huge red flag. So um, hopefully this video has been helpful. Thanks.